the night deepened in outer heaven, the fortress stood as a silent sentinel of impending doom. Within its darkened halls, Snake laid unconscious, his mission far from complete. Solid Snake, a man of unyielding resolve, was about to awaken to new alliances and unforeseen challenges. Snake began to come to, slowly regaining consciousness and looking weary. The room was well lit, almost clinical. Subtle ambient noises of a distant echo and the small hum of machinery played in the background. A gentle hand suddenly applied a damp cloth to Snake's forehead. Their touch was careful, almost reverent. It was a woman in her late twenties, her face marked with determination and worry. Hang in there, Snake. You're gonna be okay. As she spoke, Snake's eyes fluttered open. Initially blurred, his vision started focusing. His gaze was wary and his body was tense, but he was still too weak to move significantly. Where am I? You're safe, for the moment. This is one of the medical wings of Outer Heaven. Most of the staff and personnel have been reassigned to Building 3. Something big is happening. I'm Jennifer. Jennifer, who are you? Why help me? I'm here undercover, like you. I managed to infiltrate by posing as a member of the medical staff. I can help you heal your wounds. So please, Snake, can you do me a favor and stop moving? Jennifer, there's someone you should know about. Calls himself Solid Snake. He's on our side, a soldier with the Americans. They're sending their best, Foxhound, on a mission to infiltrate the base. They reached out to us to provide support and intel for him. I'm not clear on their exact objective, but this partnership could be beneficial for us both. This is the first real chance to finally hit back at Outer Heaven and save our people. We have to help him. You're with the Resistance, aren't you? Schneider sent you? Schneider didn't want me to go. I have no combat experience. I'm only meant to provide medical assistance to the Resistance members. He felt it was too dangerous for me, but I have someone to save. My brother. They've got him captive somewhere in this fortress, and many others too. He told me that the Americans were sending in a professional. He told me to be patient. Then how is it you're here now? I couldn't just sit by and let everyone else risk their lives. Reluctantly, he agreed to let me go. We're all desperate here, Snake. I convinced him that we couldn't wait any longer for Foxhound to arrive, so we decided to infiltrate ourselves. I was the one with the best chance of getting in without blowing my cover. As soon as I saw you on the ground unconscious, I knew who you were. I managed to wheel you here. Sounds like you're in over your head. You shouldn't be here, Jennifer. You're no soldier. We're all taking risks here, Snake. I want to help. And you're welcome, by the way. Look, I appreciate the help, but I can take it from here. Is there a safe place for you to go? Yes. There's a resistance safe house not far from here, just outside the base. We had planned to use it for the hostages once we got them out. But I can't leave yet. My brother is still here. He could be killed at any moment. I can't waste any more time. Okay, Jennifer. Now it's my turn to help you. I'll save him and bring him to you. I promise. All right, fine. But you better make good on that promise. Okay, I'm heading out. Don't take any unnecessary risks. Just head straight to the safe house and wait for me there. Snake, there's one more thing. Schneider told me you're looking for a Dr. Madnar? I've been receiving intel from another Resistance member. Her name's Diane. She's far from any combat zone, but she's helping through comms. She's an intelligence specialist and was instrumental in planning my infiltration. We wouldn't have been able to do any of this without her. So she's your eyes and ears. Exactly. She's always had a knack for gathering information. She infiltrated the communications network of Outer Heaven all on her own to get us the intel we needed to save the hostages. She'll be able to help you locate Dr. Madnar. It shouldn't be a problem for her. That's great news. Hopefully, it'll be the actual Dr. Madnar this time. How do I reach her? Use the frequency 140.33. She'll be waiting to hear from you. Understood. I'll contact her once I move out. Take care. You too, Snake. Thank you. Snake stood up and readied his gear as Jennifer began to head towards the door. As the door closed behind Jennifer, Snake was left alone with his thoughts. He was a soldier, trained to follow orders and complete his mission for his country. 
loyalty and duty were ingrained in him, guiding his every move. But now faced with the desperate pleas of the resistance members, something stirred within him. These people were not real soldiers. They were ordinary men and women, thrust into extraordinary circumstances. Jennifer, with her determination and bravery, would likely have met a grim fate if she had continued on her own, along with the rest of the resistance members. They were fighting a losing battle. Snake knew that rescuing the resistance members was not part of his official mission, yet he couldn't ignore their plight. He had seen too much suffering in war already for somebody still so young, too many lives lost. Snake was an extremely elite soldier, perhaps among the best. If he had the power to make a difference to help those less capable than himself, then it was his responsibility to act. In that moment, Snake's resolve hardened. His mission was clear, but his conscience demanded more. He would not only complete his objectives, but also protect those who had placed their hopes in him. With renewed determination, Snake prepared to face the dangers ahead, driven by a sense of duty that went beyond mere orders. Diane, this is Snake. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. This is Steve. What do you want? Steve? I'm looking for Diane. I need some intel. Oh, great. Another one. Diane's busy right now. You know, doing something important like, I don't know, shopping. Can I take a message? What the? Look, kid. I don't know if you think this is some sort of game, but this is urgent. Get her on the line now. Steve, what have I told you about messing with the radio? Fine. Here, take it. It's just some guy. Snake or something. What a stupid name. Sorry about that, Snake. That was my brother. He can be a bit much sometimes. Good to finally talk to you. Jennifer told me you'd be calling. Diane was formerly a vocalist in the positive punk band, Thin Wall. After sympathizing with the resistance in her country, she joined their cause. Utilizing her natural ability for information gathering and her feminine charm, she engaged in intelligence activities within Outer Heaven, working to accumulate knowledge on the mercenaries and armaments within the fortress state. Where are you located? Me? I'm just at home right now. I just stepped away for a moment to make some lunch. Anyway, I'm rambling. What can I do for you, Snake? Uh, okay. Jennifer said that you could help with navigation and information. Absolutely. You're in the medical wing, right? There's an armory located north from your location. It contains a rocket launcher. You'll need it for your next objective. And that objective would be? Dr. Madnar, of course. Schneider and Jennifer filled me in. He's being held near the northern wing. There will be two guards blocking the path. You can't miss them. The bloody brads, they call them. You're gonna need some serious firepower to take them down. So, it's lucky for you that I know exactly where the armory is. What do you mean exactly? Why would I need a rocket launcher for these guys? Just trust me, Snake. They're something more than human. They're androids, developed by Madnar himself, as a matter of fact. I've intercepted constant chatter on the comms over the past few weeks. The guards seemed very excited about deploying them. The brand new TX-11 model Cyberoid with dense armor plating, blah, blah, blah. We've done our best to avoid them altogether. But if you want to find Madnar, you're gonna have to go straight through them. Anyway, they won't go down without major firepower. Okay, okay, I get it. I'll head for the armory for the launcher. Jennifer's making her way to the safe house. I presume you're aware? Of course, she's making good ground as we speak. I'll be supporting her, don't worry. I'm here to help you too, so contact me if you need anything. Watch your back, Snake. Snake, having found his way into the armory, equipped himself with the rocket launcher. He then began moving stealthily through the corridor. His movements were calculated and silent, despite the heavy gear he carried. The eerie hum of the fortress provided a tense soundtrack to his cautious advance. The two giant bloody brads patrolled the area ahead, their movements synchronized and robotic. On the surface, they seemed like unstoppable killing machines, but the visible glowing cores at their napes revealed their weak spots. Diane, I'm approaching the northern wing. Any updates on the brads? Aim for their power cores located behind the back of their heads. Intel courtesy of the Outer Heaven Mercenary Force. These soldiers just love to gossip. 
back of the neck. Got it. Let's make this quick. You can thank me later. As Snake entered, he ducked behind a large piece of cover and observed their patrol pattern. After a few moments, he readied the rocket launcher, took a deep breath, and stepped out from his cover. He fired the launcher. The rocket streaked across the room and hit the first Bloody Brad directly in the core, causing a massive explosion that sent shrapnel flying. One down, one to go. The second Brad turned immediately, its sensors locking onto Snake's position. Intruder detected. Kill on sight. It immediately opened fire with its built-in arm cannon. Snake rolled to the side, avoiding the gunfire, and scrambled for another piece of cover. He reloaded the launcher, his movements quick and precise. However, before Snake could react, the incredible speed of the Brad closed the distance between them. With no way to reach the nape, Snake had no choice but to open fire on the Brad head-on, a futile effort, as the Brad tanked the blast and continued its advance. It knocked the rocket launcher out of Snake's hands, causing it to slide across the room. The android then grabbed Snake by the neck and lifted him off the floor. Snake struggled and was about to lose consciousness. No amount of CQC would work on a machine so strong and powerful. With no other options, Snake reached for anything he could get his hands on in his pack. He pulled the pin on a grenade and dropped the bag behind the Brad. The bag was full of explosives, causing a massive explosion that sent them both hurtling towards the wall and forcing the Brad to release Snake from its vice grip. With quick thinking, Snake had placed the bag strategically so that the Brad would shield him from the explosion. Ignoring his pain from the force of the blast and driven by sheer willpower, Snake quickly jumped towards the rocket launcher. He grabbed it and fired directly at the Brad before it had time to readjust. The rocket hit its mark, exploding upon impact and taking down the second Brad in a fiery blaze. Wow, you're amazing, Snake. The way to Dr. Madnar should be clear now. He moved forward, stepping over the wreckage of the fallen Brads. He paused briefly to assess the damage he'd caused, his expression hard and resolute. Snake reached a door at the end of the corridor. It opened, revealing the entrance to the northern wing. He stepped through as the door closed ominously behind him. Now in a dimly lit austere chamber, the silence was oppressive, punctuated only by the distant hum of machinery and occasional drips of water echoing through the hall. He moved slowly, alert to any sign of danger. Dr. Madnar, an elderly, frail-looking man with a shock of white hair and a white lab coat, was discovered huddled in the corner of a small barred cell. His eyes widened with a mix of fear and hope as he recognized Snake approaching. Who are you? Please don't hurt me. I'm Snake, with Foxhound. I'm here to rescue you, Doctor. Thank God. I feared they'd leave me to die here. I'm afraid I've outlived my usefulness to them. Snake quickly worked to unlock the cell door using keys taken from one of the bloody brads. He opened the cell and stepped inside, helping Dr. Madnar to his feet. We need to move, Doctor. Can you walk? Yes, I think so. But my daughter, Ellen, they took her too. They told me that they would kill her if I didn't do as they demanded, or worse. I had no choice but to create their infernal machines. We can't leave without her, Snake, please. Okay, we'll find her. But you must tell me about Metal Gear. How can it be stopped? Metal Gear? It's a mobile nuclear launch platform that doubles as a bipedal tank. It can launch a nuclear missile from any terrain, the missile itself being virtually undetectable until it's too late. Its production is all but complete. They are likely applying finishing touches as we speak. And then? I don't know what they plan on doing with it. There has to be a way to stop it. Yes, there's a failsafe, of course, but I refuse to say any more until my daughter is safe and away from all of this. Don't worry, Doctor. We're going to find your daughter, and then I'll escort you both to a resistance safe house. Let's go. As they navigated the dark, oppressive corridors filled with cells, their footsteps echoed ominously through the hallways, the tension palpable as they moved cautiously from cell to cell. Stay close. We need to find her quickly. They approached a cell door with a small barred window. Dr. Madnar peered inside. His eyes widened in recognition. Ellen, my dear, are you in there? Father, is that you? Snake quickly unlocked the cell door using the keys. As the door swung open, Ellen Madnar, a young woman in her early 20s, rushed out to embrace her father tightly. 
Ellen, thank goodness you're safe. I was so scared. Ellen Madnar was a former Bolshoi ballet star and the only daughter of the brilliant scientist and robotics engineer, Dr. Drago Petrovich Madnar. She was kidnapped by the mercenary force of Outer Heaven while she and her father attempted to seek asylum in the United States. Ellen was held hostage to coerce her father into developing the TX-55 Metal Gear, a task he ultimately fulfilled. Diane, this is Snake. I've got the doctor and his daughter. I need to get them out of here. What's the quickest way to the safe house? This is Steve again. Diane is currently taking a shower, so you're gonna have to deal with me. So tell me, Mr. Snake, what exactly are your intentions with my sister? You are really testing my patience. I don't have time for this. Put Diane on the call right now. Okay, fine. You don't have to jump down my throat. Ugh, whatever. Hey, Snake. I apologize again for my brother. I overheard you have the doctor. Good work, Snake. Okay, so, Schneider provided me with the layout of the base from what he could remember. As you are currently in Building 2, you'll need to follow the signs to the underground car park. There's a tunnel system that connects Building 2 to Building 1. It also has an exit from the base itself into the desert. With the skeleton crew left in Buildings 1 and 2, you should be clear to ride out of there with no problems. You'll have to hotwire one of the vehicles there. Acknowledged. Heading there now. Inform the others. The three made their way through the underground car park, navigating through the space filled with abandoned vehicles. They found a serviceable jeep and quickly piled in. Stay low and stay quiet. We're almost out of here. He hotwired the jeep and drove cautiously through the tunnel system, following Diane's directions. The tension was high, but they encountered seemingly no resistance as they navigated the network of tunnels. Suddenly, an enemy jeep appeared behind them. The enemy jeep accelerated, closing the distance rapidly. The guard leaned out of the window, aiming his weapon at Snake and his passengers. Damn it. Should have known it wouldn't be that easy. Father, hold on! Stay down! Snake swerved to avoid the incoming bullets, the sound of gunfire echoing through the tunnel. He glanced in the rearview mirror, assessing the situation. With precise timing, Snake steadied the jeep with one hand and grabbed his pistol with the other, aiming back at the pursuing vehicle. Take the wheel! He fired a series of shots, the bullets narrowly missing the enemy guard. The guard returned fire, but Snake managed to dodge the shots by zigzagging the jeep. The tunnel walls flashed by in a blur as the chase intensified. Finally, with a moment of clarity, Snake aimed carefully and fired a single shot that hit the tire of the enemy jeep. The tire blew out, causing the enemy jeep to swerve violently. The guard lost control, and the jeep rolled spectacularly down the tunnel. It skidded across the floor, sparks flying, before exploding, ending the guard and any other signs of threats. Snake accelerated away from the wreckage, ensuring they were clear of any further danger. They continued through the tunnel system with heightened caution, but the encounter with the enemy jeep was likely a lone patrol due to the reduction in security in buildings 1 and 2. The jeep emerged from the tunnel into the open desert. The cool night air and the vast expanse of sand stretched out before them. Snake drove towards the designated safe house, the headlights cutting through the darkness. As they arrived, Snake helped Dr. Madnar and Ellen inside, where they were greeted by Schneider, Jennifer, and a few other resistance members, who welcomed them with relief and cautious optimism. Thank you, Snake. I don't know how we can ever repay you. Thank you. You saved us. You're a hero, Snake. I'm no hero. Never will be. I'm just a soldier, doing my job. But I'm glad you're safe. As everyone took refuge in the dimly lit, discreet safe house, the atmosphere was tense but focused. Snake was seated at a crude table, while Dr. Madnar and Ellen rested nearby. All right, Doctor. We've got a moment. Tell me how to destroy Metal Gear. Metal Gear is located on the 100th floor basement of Building 3, about 20 kilometers north of here. It's a highly secured area. And its weakness, how do I destroy it? When they forced me to build it, I managed to leave one critical flaw, its feet. 
the joints where the feet connect to the legs. I didn't have time to reinforce them before they went ahead with the final tests. So how do I exploit this flaw? You'll need plastic explosives. Place them on the weak points on each of its feet exactly here inside the joint. If you put them anywhere else, it won't work. It has to be precise. If you've done it correctly, the explosion should cause a chain reaction that will destabilize the entire unit and destroy it. Plastic explosives on the feet. Got it. Anything else I should know? Just be aware that it's heavily guarded. They are not just simply soldiers here. They are zealots. They'll do anything for power, for control, for independence. They will protect Metal Gear at all costs. They've invested too much to let it be destroyed so easily. Be careful. Huh. So I've been told. I'm prepared for whatever comes next. Just make sure you and Ellen take care of each other. The Resistance here will help you get to wherever you need to go. We will. Thank you again, Snake. For everything. Like I said, just doing my job. Snake, the area around Building 3 is highly patrolled. It's why I was able to get to you so easily and escape the base. They've likely taken the rest of the prisoners with them. Unlike the Doctor and Ellen, my brother and the others are combatants. They probably want to keep them under increased security to avoid a revolt. I agree. After all, there are cells in all three main buildings of the base, and Diane has also confirmed that they've increased security inside the building, too. That's what all the communications seem to be suggesting. So this could mean only one thing. They are ready to activate Metal Gear. Yes. So that was your main objective from the beginning, to destroy Metal Gear. I'm heading back. Just wait here a little while longer. I'll send the prisoners this way. If I'm not with them, then just go without me. I still have a mission to complete. You won't hear any arguments from me. Remember, Snake, we'll be here to support you all the way. If we discover anything new, we'll contact you. Good luck. Snake left the sanctuary of the safe house. The weight of his mission was heavy on his shoulders. The road and dangers ahead were now becoming clearer. The lines between his orders and his conscience had blurred, forging a new path defined by duty and humanity. With each turn of the wheel, Snake steeled himself for the final confrontation, ready to face the heart of outer heaven and the monstrous creation that awaited him. A solid snake drove into the dawn heading towards Building 3. His determination illuminated the path ahead as a beacon of hope. Whatever.